Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video from Salesforce Mojo here. We are gonna be going over the new feature product sets, and this is going to cover both B2B and D2C commerce use cases. I'm really excited about the content today. This is a new feature. Everyone loves a new feature. Uh, in the past, we've had this in previous versions uh, with Cloud Craze, uh, but this does start to give us some functionality with product sets to be able to bundle items together. So in today's video, we're actually gonna see what it looks like to set up product sets, and we're also gonna see, of course, the end result of this, and we'll talk a little bit about where to use this and some of the limitations that are right now. All right, so let's set the stage with a quick overview of how product sets work from a data perspective. The first thing you should know is that product sets allow you to group products together that should be sold together. So what does this look like? The first thing you need is a product with a special type called set. And this allows us to group products underneath it. You should keep in mind though, this product is not actually added to your cart. It's just there to group things together. So we'll show you this in a moment here, but keep that in mind. Next, you have the actual products. These are your normal products that will be grouped together and can be added to the cart at the same time. They have all the normal requirements, price book, entitlement, categories, but an additional requirement to have a relationship to this new product record with a special type of set. With this background, let's jump right into it and let's see what this looks like. So here we are logged back into one of our Salesforce Mojo instances and in one of our storefronts. This is our B2C storefront. And the reason we're logged in here is because B2C storefront is the only one currently that has a product set component that you can just drop right on the page. It's available, the feature is available in the B2B template. Uh, however, there's not an out of the box component, so you'd need to build your own. So for today's purposes, we're going to just use uh, B2C so we can show you what this looks like. Now we're actually gonna start with the end product in mind today. So we're here because you can see on this page, we're on a drop-in kitchen sink bundle. And this bundle is actually a product in Salesforce, which we'll show you in a moment. But you can see on the right-hand side, we have several items underneath this with a handy button that says add all to cart and this allows us to quickly add all of these related and bundled or you know a product set into the cart at once so if i were to go ahead and click add all to cart you can see those have been added to my cart i can navigate over to my cart and i'll be able to see that i have my kitchen soap dispenser i have my drop-in kitchen sink and i have my garbage disposal but you'll notice that i don't have the actual set that's because when you build a set, like I mentioned before, the set actually isn't added to the cart. It's just there as kind of a bundle or a wrapper around all of these items here. So here's a couple of key distinctions that I think are important about this. If you need uh, functionality for kind of product sets that need to be sold together and can't be sold without each other, this out of the box feature isn't for you. Uh, you would need to do some customizations. I think the base data model could be good for you, uh, but the out of the box components that come in the storefront, they enable you to go to a product page, as I mentioned before, uh, go to the bundle itself and be able to add all of them at the same time and also add them individually. So at the end of the day, these are just products that are displayed together on here. It also does not enforce any grouping on side of the cart. So if you want to be able to see, you know, like the parent bundle and then a couple of attached uh, products underneath it as like add-ons, uh, again, this does not provide that. Uh, but if you want to be able to show your users a quick and easy list of here are all the things you should buy together and give them the option to opt in or out of certain of those items, this is a perfect fit for you. All right, now that we set the stage with exactly what the end product looks like, let's go ahead and set up a product set and products underneath it together so you guys can see how that's actually done. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna to navigate to the product workspace. Uh, it should be down under the workspace section here. And you can see that we have a new product class and product type called set. Now this is where everything is bundled together. So again, this top bundle right here is not a product that can be added to the cart. Uh, it's a special type that allows you to wrap things together uh, to make this bundle. So how you'll do this is you'll go up into the top right hand corner, click the drop down arrow and then click new product set. This modal will open up and allow you to enter your product sets name. So for our demo purposes today to continue to fill out our products uh, inside of tiny homes here, 
we're going to enter a new barn door bundle here with a couple of products underneath it that need to be bought with it. So let's go ahead and enter that. Now that we have the information added in here in the SKU, it can be whatever you want, the name can be whatever you want, uh, but I would fill in a couple of those uh, pieces here and then you click save. Now that we have that set on here, uh, we'll go ahead and we will add this to a category. We will add this to an entitlement. Those two do need to be on here in order for your product to show in the storefront. If you want to show a bundled price uh, as a person's going into the list page to see what that looks like, you could add a price book. Uh, however, again, this cannot be added to the cart, so uh, a person will not be able to add this individually. So let's go ahead and add that category and the entitlements here. We'll do that quickly under these related lists. Add the category for products. All right, now that we have that done, our barn door bundle is done. However, we do need to enter a couple of child products underneath it. So we'll go ahead and close this for now, and we're gonna come back to our product workspace. We will go over to our dropdown and click new. We'll go ahead and give this a name, some details, and product description, we'll be right back. All right, now we have this product. Let's go ahead and click save here, and we will go ahead and fill all the details in for this the categories, the entitlement policies, and price books. Uh, this follows the very similar process we've done uh, in past products, so I'll go ahead and skip forward to when we have that filled in. All right, so now we have our interior sliding barn door completed. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and close this and we'll come back to our new bundled barn door here, and we'll go to our child products and we'll click add right here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look for our barn door, interior barn door, it looks like it uh, shows up right here for us. Uh, we'll go ahead and click the checks here. We could do multiple at once, but we'll just do kind of one at a time here. Uh, we'll click next here, and then you're able to provide a sequence, and the sequence is you know one through uh, whatever the, the number of products you have inside of this bundle, uh, the number of quantity you want to default it to. So if you know, I were selling uh, you know, hinges and I sold them individually and I wanted the person to default to three, I could put three here. Uh, right, we're gonna keep this at one for now. And then the product relationship type, uh, and you can see this in the documentation that will be linked below as well, uh, but there's only one value for this right now, and it's a little bit tricky to actually get that value unless you know what it is, uh, but it starts with set, and once you type in set, you will see set to set component relationship. Uh, that's a mouthful right there for sure. Uh, but you'll have that in there, and then you'll click save here. And now we have our bundle, and then we have our one child underneath it. Uh, this by itself probably would look a little weird to have only one bundle and one item. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add a couple more that we intended to add as well, and also add a couple of extra images, and we'll come back here in a moment. All right, we've gone ahead and created two more products. We'll come over here to our child products and let's add those two new products. They should be the hook and eye and also an adapter uh, for the flat rail. So now we have both those selected. We'll click next. We'll do the same thing. We'll leave sequence as is and basically that allows it to pull in uh, whatever order it gets back. But we'll put in our set information here Click save, and now we have all three products, and across all three products, we have all of the you know, categories, entitlements, price books, uh, and media uh, put in for those. Uh, so now, the next step is we do need to re-index because we have created a, a new product. And I will make one more uh, mention here. Uh, we didn't have to do a whole lot to get this information on here, uh, but if you don't see child products on your related list over here, you will need to go over to uh, edit object and then you will go down to the page layout and you'll go to the related list section here and this related list section will allow you to drag in the child products and once you have that uh, everything else is already there for you but if you're having a hard time uh, finding that that's where you will find that so let's go ahead and go back to our store uh, go to search here and then rebuild and we'll do a full index rebuild. I have noticed a little bit with this partial re-index that uh, for some rebuilds, it doesn't actually take everything in. And I don't know if it's just with the set right now or not, uh, but I was having some issues with this earlier. So do a full re-index. Uh, that will make sure everything gets picked up. 
as long as you're not doing it too frequently. And the next thing we're gonna do while we're waiting for that is we'll go over to Experience Builder. And once we're in Experience Builder, what I'll do is I'll go over to our product page here. And once we're on our product page, we'll be able to see that we have a component over here called product set. This product set is uh, what you need to drag on the page and it actually uh, is smart enough to know, you know, to add it and, and you know, be smart about how it actually does the add to cart at the very top here. Um, however, there is one uh, bug right now that I'm noticing, at least in my instance. Um, so if you're seeing this as well, uh, I'll just give you a little hint here. Uh, product set's actually right here. It's a little tiny thing on the left hand side. Um, there's an issue going on right now with this latest release that is making all of these components micro size. Uh, it doesn't actually affect the, the published version of it, uh, but it might just be hard for you to actually click that like two pixel uh, a little uh, section right there in order to get this up. But once you have it up, uh, we're passing in a, an expression from the uh, product information called product.details, uh, and that's actually what's giving this component the information it needs. Uh, by default, everything is selected here, but you could go ahead and you know remove the add all to cart if you wanted to, or remove you know the tax indication, or you know one of, any of these other checkboxes. But that's really all you have control over right now. Um, if you're doing this in the B2B side, you won't have this component, and there isn't a sample quite yet to be available. Um, so you'll have to kind of rebuild uh, this component based off the data model. Uh, which you know isn't wouldn't be too tricky. All the pieces are there, uh, but it will take you some time to kind of you know get that information formatted correctly. So once we have this um, in here, you would go ahead and click publish. I've already done that. Uh, so once our uh, index is done uh, refreshing here, we'll come back and it looks like everything is ready to go. So we'll go ahead and go over to our site and refresh that page. All right, we're back on our site and I do see uh, the barn door bundle down here below. You will notice that you see all the other products as well, uh, including um, you know, the individual items. Uh, you can see that right now my bundles don't have a price on it. Uh, so if I were doing this in a real uh, situation, I might decide to move my bundles to their own category to separate them out. I might also include all the prices in the bundled product just so it shows uh, nicely on there and I probably would have the image with all three images on here so it's clear that there is distinction between them uh, and you could also potentially put an attribute on there and have that attribute be on the, the filters over here so you could filter down by bundles or not uh, so you have plenty of options there uh, but our, our key purposes here was to show you how to set up the bundle so we'll go ahead and click into our barn door bundle here you can see we don't have the quantity and add a button because uh, it's smart enough to know uh, not to show that because this is a set uh, product here. And you can see down below we have our interior door we put in here. We have our hook and eye and we have our adapter as well. Um, I have noticed this little colon showing up here on this product uh, set right now in this component. I'm not sure why. Uh, there's really no way to override it. I've, I've notified Salesforce so uh, hopefully it'll go away in a little bit. Um, but uh, that is just something we'll have to live with for a little bit. And then from here, I can go ahead and change my quantity, add to cart, or I can click add all to cart. So hopefully this was a helpful uh, overview of this new product set feature that was released in spring 23. Uh, we'll hopefully get a uh, similar product uh, set component on the B2B side here in the next release or two. Uh, but this is a great start into allowing us to bundle products together and make that experience better for our customers.